Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this time of worship as part of the Centerport United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Roy Grubbs, alongside our music director, Joe Ferrante. We welcome you to Gary and Barbara Royland's backyard. We're here at their house, and we're recording under this beautiful structure that they added on a couple years ago. And we thank you for welcoming us. You can see the fire behind us. And it's a beautiful fall day. Of course, this is a pre-recorded service so that we could be with Barbara and Gary. And we wanted to have worship with them. Also, we give thanks for Joe and Megan. As Joe, we hear it's pretty imminent now. Child number four is coming really any minute. So if you hear a phone ring, Joe might have to stop. But seriously, we're in prayer for you. And part of the reason why we're pre-recording this service today so that we can do this and Joe doesn't need to worry about the timing of what we pray is a joyous event, uh, knowing that it's a process to get there, but that there's joy at the end. And we look forward to hearing all about that. Joe, and thank you for being with us. And of course, thank you to Gina Grubbs behind our camera. Please check us out on our website and also on our Facebook and YouTube pages at Centerport United Methodist Church. We have so many ministries going on. In fact, Gina, behind the camera, is leading an online Sunday school. She's also running our youth group in, in conjunction with another parishioner. There are so many opportunities for men's group and women's group studies of all kinds. We're even doing a fundraiser, uh, Barbara, right now. As some of you may know, we have our annual fair called Santaport. Right. Unfortunately, with COVID, we can't do a big fair at the church, but. We've been running a fundraiser on our own, haven't we? We sure have. Can I, can I just thank everybody who has gone to the fair with me? Um, I think many of you have saw the video. And I would just like to tell you something. That together, we have raised $17,920 for the Santa Fort 2020 Fair. So um, my personal goal was that we raised $20,000. And we still have a few more weeks left. So. If you haven't contributed yet and you would like to, that would be great. Um, it would be really nice to meet the goal of 20,000 in 2020. So, but, but thank you all for contributing and going to the fair with me. I hope you had a good time. And thank you for sharing your video and idea with all of us in the church, Barbara. It was wonderfully done. So those are our announcements for today. And now, as we have all been busy in this season of Harvest and Bounty, working in our yards, preparing, and preparing to come to this time. Let us go ahead and close our eyes and take a moment to breathe and give thanks. Breathe out anything that would distract you from hearing God's message of love and grace today. As you breathe in, let that be the Holy Spirit. join in our opening prayer at this time. Loving God, in the midst of all the voices we hear that crush our spirit and deny our calling, we come to hear your voice of affirmation. Let this time of worship quiet our fears, soothe our bruised souls, and energize us for ministry in and with your beloved world. Let faith abide, let hope abide, let love abide here in our homes, in our community, in our world, but most of all, here in us. Amen. And as we, this opening prayer, kind of set us up to look for and listen for God's call in our lives, our first hymn is aptly titled, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, from our United Methodist Temple.
join together now in prayer. God, we give you thanks for this day, for the beauty of each and every day in our lives, for this season of harvest, this season of stewardship, which means remembering all the gifts you've given us, God, and that really we are managing and stewards of all that you have given us, and that we are listening for you to help guide us in how best to use everything that you've given us. And that 10% of what you've given us is really yours, and that we are called to give that back to you in ministry somewhere in the world. So Lord, we give you thanks also for this season of Thanksgiving to remind us again to be thankful for our families, our homes, our health, and everything that we have for this opportunity here to worship and for the technology to connect us and to bring us together. Lord, there are so many prayers for those right here at this address. We <laughs> pray for Gary and Barbara and all they've been going through. We pray for Gary's health, for Barbara's health during this pandemic time and for healing in so many different ways. And we pray for your spirit to continue to be upon Barbara as she leads us in word and message today. Just open her heart and mind to what you have for all of us. Lord, we have so many parishioners, family members, people in our workplaces, our schools, and all around us that need your loving care and touch. For those that are sick with this terrible virus or with any disease of any kind in body and mind and soul, strengthen them and be with them. Let us be hands to help in any way, ears to listen, shoulders to lean into, to be your hands and feet, to bring hope and caring and light into a world that needs it. For those that are suffering through disasters, natural disasters, the storms brewing in the tropics and the fires that still are burning, Lord, help those in need. And again, let us help those in need too. Lord, for storms of any kind that come in life, and for all the joys that we're celebrating, lots and lots of weddings in my own family and weddings in the community, upcoming births, again, we give thanks for Joe and Megan and ask for you to watch over their entire family at this point. Lord, we give you thanks for all the joys and for even the hard times and how it shapes us and helps us to connect with you and with one another. Jesus came to earth to show us all about how to connect with you more deeply and how to lift one another up. And it's in the words of Jesus that we pray now together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And we come now to this time of offering. And normally when I'm in the church, we have offering plates. And they're brass, or they can be made out of wicker, or burlap, or whatever kind of, of way that they are. And we pass this basket around. And people in the congregation can put in an offering into this basket and offer up to the Lord. Usually it's representing a financial donation of some kind because it does cost money for the church to lead its ministries. And so we ask for you to check us out on our website and find all the ways that you can financially contribute. Again, God blesses us with everything we have and we're called to give some of that back in ministry to the world. And so we offer many ways for that to happen in mission and ministry of all kinds. And so we take this time of offering to remember that we need to offer to God, not just on Sundays, but each and every day. And in fact, Gary Roiland's the one that got us started on a placard in our church. And I often show you that placard that says, I give electronically. And Gary has been part of our stewardship team to help us push towards electronic giving even before the pandemic and now with everything being virtual barbara that has become really important where many of our givers are giving electronically now 
to the point where the basket is becoming more and more symbolic. And symbolic of the ways that we can give electronically by checking in on one another through prayers, by giving each other electronic cards, by calling people on our telephones or maybe in an iPad or doing this Zoom call one more time just to check in with somebody and see how they're doing. There's all kinds of ways we can connect virtually and even as we're walking in our streets and in our communities to connect with one another. That's so important right now. And so we offer up to God this technology that we have, this beautiful setting we're given to worship in for Gary and Barbara themselves and for us and the new life that's around us. And we dedicate that all to God in our offering today. I challenge you to find how many different ways, I've given you some, how many different ways, even in these times, can we find to be thankful to God? And I challenge you to pray about that today with your families and see how many you can come up with. For now, I offer up this prayer of dedication for all of us in our givings to God. Gracious and loving God, receive the gifts of our lives and our treasures. They have belonged to you since our very beginning. We give them freely, joyfully, prayerfully. With them, we celebrate your great power that is love, a love that abides always, a love that radically transforms, a love that makes us whole. Amen. And you know, I'm smiling because as I said, a love that radically transforms, our fire just transformed a little bit and we had a little roar of the fire kind of God, I think, agreeing with our prayer and blessing us as we're here. And so we come to that loving hymn that we have in our hymnal. It's called the gift of love. leading us in word and message today. Thank you, Barbara. The prayer of illumination today is, Holy Spirit, help us to hear your word. The words of call, the words of promise, the words of faith, the words of hope, the words of love. Help us to live all these words, the words of life. Amen. Our gospel lesson today is from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. It is called The Rich Man and Lazarus. But before I start reading it, I just wanted to put the reading in a little bit of context for you. So earlier in Luke, in chapter 14, it tells us that large crowds were traveling with Jesus. It tells us that tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him. And it also tells us that the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were muttering and they muttered something that said, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And in response to that, Jesus starts telling the crowd parables. And he starts with the parable of the lost sheep, and then he talks about the parable of the lost coin, the parable of the lost son, 
the parable of the shrewd manager, and then this story, the rich man and Lazarus. So now list, listen together to the words of Jesus. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus, in like many, he received evil things, but now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and understanding of his word. Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on whenever you're watching this. It is so wonderfully weird to be here today with Pastor Roy and Joe and Gina and, and all of you. And, and I, I just wanted to take a minute to thank Roy and Joe and Gina for, and all the musicians and all the people who have been involved in the services. They're putting together so many online services. And I just know that Gary and I are very appreciative and I'm sure the rest of the congregation is appreciative. So I just wanted to say thank you all for all that you've been doing for us. Okay, so back to today's lovely parable, the rich man and Lazarus. I don't know how many times you've heard this story that Jesus told the Pharisees, but for me, it literally, it takes on a whole new light in 2020 in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. So there are two characters in this story. There's a very rich man who wears purple and fine linen. So, you know, you wonder why Jesus bothers to tell us what color the man likes to wear. And it turns out that this purple at the time was a very rare dye. So, you know, I Googled it, and Google tells us that they found this dye in snails in the Mediterranean Sea. And according to Google, it, you need four million snails to make a pound of this purple dye. So you can kind of imagine how expensive purple clothes were back then. So Jesus wanted us, he wanted the Pharisees to know that he was talking about a very rich man. Because he says the man wore purple, and that's on the outside, but fine linen, and that would be on the inside. So Jesus wants you to know that this man had nice clothes on the outside, and even the clothes you couldn't see were very expensive. And we're told that the man lived in luxury every day. But that's really all we know about him while he's alive. So that's the rich man. And then there's this other man. The other man is the complete opposite of the rich man. This man was a beggar. And we know he was crippled because scripture tells us that he was laid at the rich man's gate. He didn't even walk there himself. His friends probably took him. And so we learn that this crippled, hungry beggar is covered in saws that the dogs lick. And one of the things that you know we in 2020 have to realize that these dogs in Jesus' time, they were not these little hypoallergenic designer pampered pooches that everyone owns today. These were street dogs. These were wild dogs. But there's one thing that the poor man has that the rich man doesn't have, and that's a name. Jesus says the beggar was named Lazarus which is derived from a Hebrew word 
meaning, now get this, Lazarus means God is my helper. And then Jesus never gives the rich man a name. It's almost like it didn't matter to Jesus who this rich man was. Now you have to remember that Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees. These are a group of people who are all full of themselves and their, and their worth. So the next part of the story, both men die. Lazarus the beggar, whose name means God is my helper, is now carried by the angels to Abraham's side, meaning heaven. And the rich, nameless man, after I had imagined had a pretty fancy funeral and probably lots of speeches, he finds himself in Hades, meaning hell. And the first thing out of the rich man's mouth when he sees Lazarus is not an apology. He doesn't apologize to Lazarus and say, I'm so sorry for ignoring you. No, he continues to ignore Lazarus. And he speaks to Abraham. And he starts asking Abraham to send Lazarus on all these errands for the rich man. Tell him to dip his finger in water for me. Send him to my father's house to warn my brothers. And Abraham says, no. He says to the rich man, you received good things in your lifetime, while Lazarus received bad things. And now you are in agony, and Lazarus is being comforted. And Abraham goes on to say, this is final. There is no crossing between the two sides. There is no get out of jail free card. So as you can imagine, this story was a slap in the face to the first century self-righteous Pharisees. But what is the lesson for us here, now, in 2020? So first of all, we, we know that there's this big gap in COVID 2020 between the haves and the have nots, especially with so many people losing their businesses and losing their jobs, so many people out of work. And while I do not have a beggar at my gate, I know for a fact that just 2.2 miles from this house, people are standing on food lines. And so just to put it in a little perspective for you, my house is 3.2 miles west of the church building. So we're 3.2 miles west of the church and 2.2 miles southwest of here, people are standing in food lines. So I know this because I work in Huntington Station and I drive down East 5th Street to get to my office and the food pantry, Huntington's food pantry is on East 5th Street. And in the beginning of COVID, the food pantry was closed like everything else. And as I would drive down East Fifth, I would see these long lines of cars that I had never seen before. And then I realized that there were people, organizations in the parking lot, handing out little bags of food to all these people in these cars and people lined up from the food pantry back to the road. And then that line still continues because you know, I'm still going to my office. And so around the block from the Huntington Food Pantry, there's this little building and it's called the Helping Hand Rescue Mission. And that's also a food pantry and it's a community outreach center. And so during the height of COVID, after I saw all these food lines, I started to spend some time at this Helping Hand Rescue Mission's website because I wanted to find out what they were all about. And I was a little surprised that this little mission had such an up-to-date, informative website. And I want to read you something that their website says. The website says, as a witness to the love of God, the Helping Hand Rescue Mission seeks to improve the spiritual and temporal conditions of the children, families, and people of the communities that we serve by providing excellent service to all who come, whether they be rich or poor, high or low social status. We are here to love, to serve, and to give. We are here to love, to serve, and to give. And then in another spot on their website, it says, we help to feed, clothe, encourage, and love our community. So if you're ever feeling down, I encourage you just to go on their website and just read about all these things that are happening 2.2 miles from my house. And so I read that they have given out since March 8,000 bags of non-perishable food. That's just non-perishable food and they partnered with organizations. They provided 22,000 drive-through hot meals to local families. And then I saw for Thanksgiving, they last year gave 550 of these Thanksgiving boxes, like a Thanksgiving meal in a box, and this year they're planning to give 800. So the need is real. 
and the need is very close by, almost at our gates. So I think the parable today is telling all us rich folks that we need to do something to help all those people that are struggling. And I've worked for the same man for the past 25 years, and he owns this small business, and he and his wife live in a um, modest but very lovely home in Huntington Station. And when his grandson was very young, he asked his grandfather, he asked my boss, if my boss was rich. And my boss surprised his grandson by saying, we are all rich, including you, because we all have a roof over our heads, food on our tables, and clothes on our backs. That was my boss's definition of rich. And by that definition, many of us living here on the North Shore of Long Island, otherwise known as the Gold Coast, are indeed rich. And as rich people, we have an obligation to help others. And what this Bible story tells us today, and what COVID is teaching us, is that we have to do it now. We can't put it off till tomorrow, because we know tomorrow may not come. Did you ever put anything off? Did you ever procrastinate something and then gotten yourself in real trouble because it was too late? Like, did you ever like run out of gas because you didn't fill the tank up on time? Or have you ever gotten a ticket because your inspection or your registration expired? Have you ever missed a credit card payment? I know so many people that have put off like either going to the doctor or they put off getting their power of attorney signed and then it's literally too late and even wills. I've heard of so many people that die without wills. So sometimes the penalties of procrastinating are stiff, but not as stiff as the penalty in this story. The penalty in this story is spending eternity in hell. Eternity is a long time. And from what I'm told, hell is miserable. So we have to act now. We have to do something now because we certainly don't want to end up like the rich guy in the story that I read. So you might be thinking, but it's 2020. What can we do in 2020? We can't do much. But we have to do all that we can. And we have to follow the advice of John Wesley. He said, make all you can, save all you can, and give all you can. And you have to notice, he didn't say spend all you can. He said, give all you can. And Pastor Roy is talking to us all the time about social issues. And now, right in the middle of COVID, we have a brand new social worker intern at the church. How great is that? So we all have to continue to support the church. We have to be as generous as we can because our church has a lot of work to do. There are a lot of people that need us. And so you know, God knows exactly how much money we have. He knows what's in our bank accounts. He knows what's in our investment accounts. He knows what our house is worth, what our cars cost. He even knows if we have purple clothes in our closets. So we aren't fooling him. When we say we can't afford to give a little more, he knows exactly what we can and cannot afford to do. So how do we find out what God is thinking and expecting of us? We have to go to him in prayer. We have to talk to him about it. We have to ask for direction and guidance. And we have to be still and listen to him. And we have to trust him. You know, Roy said before, you know, the Bible teaching is that we to tithe, you know, to give 10% of our income. And so for some people, you know, I don't know, God may expect less, I don't know. And for others, he may expect a lot more. I don't know, but we each have to find out. And we can find out by going to God. And we need to do it now before it's too late. So in closing, I would like to tell you a cute little story. Our youngest grandson, he's a sophomore in college, and he called Gary and I Monday night from his dorm room. And you know, at first I was worried that something was wrong, and he assured us that everything was fine. He was just calling to check in on us, see how we were doing. And at the end of the conversation, he said to us, he said, I was wondering, is there anything specific that I can pray for you guys for? And so I was taken aback, and I, I, you know, I think a minute, and then finally I said, well, actually, you know, there were two things that you could specifically pray for. 
I said, one is that I'm going to be giving the weekly message to my congregation this week, so you could please pray for that. I said, and the other is Papa, you know, that's my husband Gary with Parkinson's disease. I said, Papa's been having a lot of trouble sleeping. If you could specifically pray for Papa to have a good night's sleep tonight, that would be great. And so Gary woke up Tuesday morning after having the best night's sleep that he's had in a while. So sometimes our prayers don't have to be big. Pray often. Pray for each other. Reach out to each other. Be a blessing. God bless you all. And please stay well. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you very much. Wonderful interpretation on this story and a call that you uh, kind of elicited to us throughout that, that scripture. It's wonderful. Which leads us into our closing hymn. A question Barbara is asking all of us is, are we willing to go to the Lord and ask what we should do, what we should give, what we should offer up to the community in our finances, in the talents that we've been given? How can we help? How can we help? And so I hope that the answer to that question is just simply, here I am, Lord. We go to God and we just offer ourselves and we're saying, in essence, hey God, whatever you're gonna ask me to do, I know you will empower me to do so. That's really what you just said, Barbara, in a little bit different words as we're leaning into this hymn. So listen to the words of this hymn and then let's make a covenant to live them out.
unlike the rich man, let our answer as God is calling us be the chorus to this hymn. Here I am, Lord, I have heard you calling in the night, in the day, in the morning, in the afternoon. I will go, Lord, if you lead me, and I will hold your people in my heart. And I promise, we promise, Lord, that we will still ourselves down enough, even with all the things that we have to do. Find that time to quiet ourselves, to listen, really listen, and respond. Go forth knowing that you have everything you need right now to do God's work and to listen for even more. Go in peace and love and the grace of God be with you now and always. Amen.